Hi, guys. Welcome to the Gig Economy Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is the B-side. Uh, this proves how old we are, because if you know, back in the day, there was always a B-side on a label or a record. Does anyone know what records are anymore? <laughs> a record. Record. <laughs> a record. Um, so every uh, every other Wednesday, we have our main show. We talk about gig news and that kind of stuff. And we started this January, the off Wednesdays, to highlight a gig worker. And the other Wednesday, highlight a gig creator slash worker slash everything. So flash everything i like that yeah i mean if, you, if you're a gig creator i'm hoping you're a gig worker at some point i mean i know there's guys uh uh there's a couple guys that have gotten deactivated that still make a ton of money on youtube uh ryan is driving maybe is that one of them that is he still getting money oh yeah i mean why not he's got like a billion subscribers so. yeah that's true that's he true. went live and he gets a lot of views even on his lives and he hasn't been in youtube for a long time yeah yeah, so I mean, once crazy. you get so many subscribers, it probably doesn't matter what content you put up, honestly. Right. So today we are highlighting Tony, the driven dad. He is uh, going to tell you about all that. I don't know Tony other than meeting him through Steve from Rideshare Rodeo. I've been trying to become more familiar with gig tubers uh, as far as like the creators and hopping in their lives. And um, obviously I was uh, attracted to Tony's beard. Do not see a spot of gray in that mofo, which is insane. Oh, that's because the light is being generous to me right now. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And it's it's like formed nice. Like mine's like a homeless person. But <laughs> anyway, beard brush, we, beard we all, heat brush. I got all that. Well, see, I won't spend the time on it. Like I'll put a, some balm and oil, but I'm not getting a heat uh -huh. brush or a straightener. I have no time for that. Yeah. Anyways, so Tony, why don't you tell us a little bit about us, uh, what you do as a gig creator, and then kind of your introduction to maybe some gig work and how you got into creating uh, content for YouTube. All right. Well, I'm in the Denver market. I've been working on Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash mainly. And how I got started into the content creation is when I first decided I was going to start doing Uber. Um, that's the first app I worked on. I did a lot of research and there were the rideshare guy and the simple driver is what I saw on there. Yeah. And they both promoted at the time. Like if you're going to do this and you're not afraid of a camera, you might as well try to become the expert in your market that people can go to. And so that's what I uh, originally got started in for gig creation is being the expert in my market or somebody that I can actually help people learn how to do the jobs because, you know, obviously in the gig economy, there's no training. Yeah. So you're saying when you started creation, your channel, it was just, uh, you said the simple mom and the ride chair guy. Oh, the simple driver. Simple driver. Sorry. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, sh I'm sure if you've watched YouTube back in like 2015, 16 or 17, somewhere in there, he um, was one of the only ones that had over 100,000 subscribers besides, I don't even think Harry had 100,000 subscribers yet. at that point. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So what got you into gig work? I always often wonder where, the, right. especially somebody that does it more than just uh, like a part-time kind of thing. Right. So I got started in gig work part-time actually because... My company that I was working for at the time kept on changing the way that we get paid on our bonuses. And if you're a salaried manager, you can't really make extra money if you lose your bonus. No. So I didn't lose my bonus based off of my performance. I, I lost it based off them moving the way that you can make it to being individual as more of a team. Mm. And I have no control over the team other than my own team. <laughs> and I was like, I got to make the money that I lost out on. So Uber, I was making good money part-time, making like $300 in two days. Okay. You know, still having time to spend with the family and everything. Sounds like not a lot of money nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> but that's as a full-time perspective, you know, 300 bucks, I could make that in a half a day. But yeah, that's how I... I dove into it is because I needed some extra money to make up for lost bonus money. So, well, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's, I think 
I started, well, that's currently, I've just had a big change. Let me back up. I've been doing gig work full time in the winter. I've done lawn care for 20 years. And so I would okay. get laid off every no uh, October ish. And then I, you know, in 2016, I started ride share and I'm like, oh, this is pretty nice. And then so since then, every winter I've got laid off. Moving forward, I actually quit my lawn care job this year after 20 years, same company for 15 years. So it's been, it's a little sticker shock and I'm just going to focus on gig work my podcast editing. And then I'm actually training to become a bus driver too. So not, oh, a, okay. not a gig, uh, it's a W2, but anyways, that's for another day. So like a, um, public transit or oh. like a kid's bus. Yeah. Sorry. Granville. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, kids school bus. That's a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing the Lord's work there. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of them, I can tell them to fuck off. And the other one, if I did that, I'm getting fired. So <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, you don't want, you don't want Jason driving normal people. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, like I have, like, I have to work on it. I have such a potty mouth. It helps that every bus has cameras throughout the entire thing. So if, if I pop right. off, it's, it's probably going to get pulled. So I guess. <laughs> there, there, there's some very fun stories from back in the days when Jason, he was taking passengers regularly. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've batted people's hands away from my radio. Yeah. I don't, I don't like oh, yeah. bullshit. I hate it. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, it, it, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Hey, so how big is that? You said you're driving in Denver. How big is Denver as, as a market? Yeah, it's about a million and a half, I'd say. Um, Colorado okay. is a little over three million, and most of it, you know, is in the front range between like Fort Collins to Colorado Springs, with okay. Denver being in the middle of those two. And and would you how how many miles would you say that is just roughly? Oh, um, like the metro city is probably like thirty or forty miles from north to okay. south, east to west, probably you know about the same. It's pretty so, symmetrical. Okay, so probably probably about size wise about the same size as Grand Rapids, but about only Grand Rapids is, is about half half your market size. So we have about uh, I think last we heard it was like six or seven hundred million seven hundred thousand people. Uh, okay, yeah, but so like Denver proper is probably like three or four thousand three or, or three hundred to four hundred thousand. Okay, and then the rest of the metro, um, all the suburbs, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of okay. like us. Our Grand Rapids proper is yeah lower, yeah, but you add all the subs yep. it's in the mill. You know, it's pretty good size. So, you right. know, yep. how close are you to Steve from Rideshare Rodeo? Um, that's about twenty minutes. Oh. um, away. Yeah, okay. not too far. All right, not bad. Yeah, not too far at all. No. So when you started uh, gig creating, did you? always want to do something like that have you had that mindset growing up i'm not sure your age my guess <laughs> is your late 30s i just turned 40 in october okay so uh, yeah that's, that, that's late 30s yeah yeah we'll, we'll <laughs> late 30s. yeah it's the last year of the decade you know because oh, like, yeah. you don't start a decade at zero that's true that's true did you ever want to do that? Like growing up in high school, like, um, you know, is something that you've like, oh, I really like this content creating or was something you just like, ah, I think I'll try it. Yeah. Stuck. So, I mean, I grew up in a house of four, two brothers and a sister and we would be like, I'm the oldest. So by the time I was old enough to become a, the babysitter, like, when we were bored, we would figure we found the camcorder and we're just like running around. I wrote like movie scripts. We never nice. finished our movies, but <laughs> of course um, we used to write our own uh, little like weird owl type parodies to songs and stuff, you know? So I think, and then my brother, he got a little, uh, a Lego studio, yeah, but he didn't have a computer and I did. So we made um, Lego movies. We made people uh, like, if there were the things like uh what's that one vine if oh. vine was if vine was something then i would have probably been huge on vine and then have like just huge yeah. because we made stuff that people were making on vine and all these youtube short and instagram reels like we were doing this before yeah just not in portrait is in landscape right that's an easy change you should put that on your challenge today. That'd be cool. Yeah, some, some I, retro I'd have to ask my brother because he's the computer nerd, even though he didn't have a computer. <laughs> he he may have a backup drive with all this old stuff. Dude, that it. would be incredible. You could like <laughs> have a, like a like the YouTube membership or something and just put it on the back end that they could. Absolutely. It'll just it'll be the reason to open up a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Well, that's cool. <laughs> so why continue to like, I mean, obviously you like doing it. What is your goal with like creating the channel? I mean, obviously everyone wants it to be like a full-time income, but it feels like there's so many creators out there. Um, right. Is that your goal? Or are you just enjoying it while it's happening you know, now? I figured if I'm going to be in the gig economy and it's something I can already do, like most of my content at this point is live streams. So you can follow me while you're riding along and you can ride with us or whatever. I have a little bit of a game plan on edited videos, but my focus for edited videos and for a, a actual good income for YouTube, I'm actually going to monetize this thing right here. Yeah. Because the, the market space for that and partnerships and brand deals is a, a lot better, I think, as far as, um, you know, I don't want to end up trying to help people make more money than to just spend it with my partners, Yeah, <laughs> you know, in the gig world, unless it's something that they can get for either free or very like I help Gary promote this because I think you know, his, his apps are great. Yeah. But other than that, I don't get paid by Gary unless somebody signs up. Okay. It's a link based. Yeah. So it's interesting. You pointed at your beard. One of the products and I can, I should have brought it down. I was thinking about it is in Boulder, Colorado that I buy it's, it's mod cap. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to check it out. Cause I want to review a lot of different yeah, things. They're right. Give... Uh, they're right near They're right. I've used them for years. It's so funny. You brought the beard up too. So back I had a random YouTube. Ch you don't have a beard. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's shorter than pubic hair. <laughs> hey, it took me like five years to grow this. Yeah. Okay, come on. I'm proud of it. <laughs> so back in the day, I created when beards started becoming a thing. So what, like five, six years ago, I created okay, a YouTube yeah. channel. And I, I, I don't know if it's still live or not, but it's called Beard Bandit. I had like uh -huh. I looked back on an old video. I had like eleven thousand views on it. I was like, "Shit!" This like me putting Dang. beard balm on. I'm like, "Man, I should right. I should have continued that." But I, you know, <laughs> I just burned out. Or I I start a bunch of hobbies like this podcasting. Right, it's actually stuck. But I, I mean, I've cared for bees. You name it, I was I've say, done it. Were, were you the <laughs> Were you the bearded bee beekeeper? I'm not sure. No, I think there was well. Maybe that's what it was. Bearded beekeeper, beard bandit. I don't know. You can probably know. You know what? Like <laughs> when I first started my YouTube channel, I didn't know anything about YouTube and niches or niches, what, however you want to call it. <laughs> well, you're very niche down being the gig True. economy podcast. Yeah. So at least people know you're they're coming here for the gig economy. I my channel's original name was the bearded daddy. Okay. Cause I have I had three with one on the way. And I was going to do ride share and beard stuff. That was the plan. And, you know, since I'm in ride share, I could also put in my BMWs at the time yeah. as content too. So <laughs> I, I think it, I was all over. I the think place. the beard daddy is a little weird. You could make only yeah. fans with that, with that title. <laughs> that was before I even knew anything about of only course. fans. <laughs> but now you look at I mean, like beard dad. What, 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 but is this yeah. only fans? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just I have only one fan, <laughs> and I'm married. To her, there you so. go. <laughs> so, so speaking of fans and so forth, what sets you what sets your content apart from from the other gig creators out there? I don't know if I set apart other than you know my wife and I we do the work together in Teslas, and okay. um. I know a lot of drivers now have Teslas, but I don't see a whole lot of content creation in that space. Right. So that's one thing I want to start maybe more focusing on is how the Tesla operates in the gig economy. But we do live streams together in separate vehicles on StreamYard and they're super long. I know like Mr. Flex does them every day, but we do those like Friday and Saturday basically. Okay. Nice. Nice. And then I have a gig university. It's called get a real job university. Nice. So I just started that. Is that affiliated with YouTube or do you have like a website for that? Um, I have neither. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's basically my version of uh, giving out content for free. I don't want to charge people for information that, you know, it, they're like, people have asked me that um, have contacted me through my channel. Like, what's your consultation fee? I'm like, I don't have a consultation fee. Like if I can't tell tell you what you need to know in 10 or 15 minutes, then maybe I should charge you a consultation fee, but that's basically all you need. Yeah. 
Well, that's fair of you. I mean, I, I would, I would caution yeah. you to think about that a little bit. You know what I mean? Like if I get enough people that need like actual one-on-one -on -one help, like a weekly thing, that'd be different. But one phone call. I mean, you oh, could, sure. you could really clean up if you have the time. I mean, honestly, there's no, like you see the Facebook. I mean, I don't know if you're on Facebook, but you should see no. these groups. I mean, and then Reddit, like even in just to the fact of like taxes, like, oh, I didn't track my mileage. Is Uber going to give me my mileage? Like this is the year I want to <laughs> blow my phone up with social media posts about taxes. I'm like, and just basic uh, stuff. I mean, I understand people can be right. ignorant about that, but I mean, do a, do a one second Google search about being an independent mm -hmm. contractor and that, that problem yeah. will pop up. And don't let Jackson Hewitt and H and R block tell you, you can't deduct things because yeah. you can. <laughs> well, don't just don't go, don't go to H and R block. They won't give you half your deductions. So tell me a little bit about the gigs you do. You said you do ride your driving DoorDash. Have, do you do anything unique as far as uh, independent contractor stuff? Or is it just like the basics like we do? Yeah, it's just the basics. In the process of setting up Dumpling because of Mr. Rideshare Rodeo. Yeah, he pressured me. I, in fact, I just canceled my like they give you a free trial for right. the monthly. I just canceled because I, I bought the initial. What was it like 20 bucks? I'm like, I'm going to work yeah. on this. And I've had zero time to do it. So for sure, the peer pressure people. I just know I've ran into a few people that are using Instacart and they're mad at it uh, while they're in my car mm -hmm. and they live close to me. So I'm like, okay. I'm losing out on some potential revenue here. Yeah. I mean, if you have a card and you're driving them around say, Hey, like if you want a personal shopper, this is what I do. I mean, yeah, I feel like you're you're a low key guy that you're not going to spam them, you know, be a salesman with it. You're just going to be like, hey, are right. you talking about this? Must be frustrating. I can help mm -hmm. you. Try. I mean, yeah, that I think that's a great great thing to do. But you were you and I were just talking about that the other day, Jason. You were out on a, on a on a it wasn't Instacart, it was one of the other ones. And what was it? You had this one person that had done like eight hundred and twenty of them. Oh yeah, like so it's been slow in January, Tony. So I fired up Instacart. So <laughs> I did oh, a couple man. Instacart runs, which were surprisingly not that bad. They they paid okay, but Instacart. I don't know if you've ever done it. Tells you how many people or how many uh, times they've ordered on Instacart. And this guy was right. 800. I was his 807th <laughs> order. So this guy, like the pandemic hit and he's like, I'm never going to the store again. <laughs> right. And he, he's like, Peace. and he tipped me $10 for three items. Like this guy knows how to get shit done. And, and I, appreciate right. it. yeah. The one problem I hear people have with Instacart, especially as a customer is that they batch a lot of that stuff together. So if I tip really well, They'll batch it with a two shitty orders. You know what I mean? And so that person right. that tipped well doesn't get the priority. Now, I guess for like two dollars, you can you can buy priority access to only get one. But I'm like, I never thought about that. If I tipped really good and two other people didn't, I'm going to you know, I'm not going to get my order. You're carrying the load. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're carrying the tip for everyone else, which is stupid. I was gonna. I had. I had a follow up on 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 your Tesla. Uh, so you say you okay. guys are driving Tesla. I quite often get. I mean, I'm on Facebook too, and I quite often get. Um, people will ask me about you know whether or not it's is it actually really you know worth it to drive a Tesla. Have you guys ever done any kind of any any kind of calculations on those? And I'm not saying let's get into the whole you know right where, where and chair anything. But but what is what about the actual you know as as opposed to filling your guy i mean this time what i mean it's like 425 <laughs> or 3 345 whatever a gallon again i mean what what do you think have you calculated how how much how much do you use on electricity for for mm -hmm. a weekend or, or something do you know yeah so on my channel i've actually done some breakdowns of the cost comparison of because i rent yeah. mine from a local person here i don't go through the uber hertz thing okay um it, and partly i've i've actually got five referrals one being my wife, but so four referrals outside of her, but I'm at $125 discount every week off of my rate. So I'm at $313. That's just about 70 more dollars in fuel cost than my car for doing this full time. So that alone is in my book paid for because I don't have to worry about wear and tear or anything. And then right. I still have some free charging months left on my lift charging because I rented one of their electric vehicles. And in Colorado, they had a deal where 
they'll give you two years of charging for free at Electrify America. So, mm. but I have estimated how much it would cost with electricity if I were to pay for it. So does your wife rent hers too? Yeah. Okay. You you feel like that's a better a better fit than owning it? As far as doing rideshare in it for our situation, yeah, because I've beat up two BMWs and I still owe money on and I'm oh, fixing no. them so I can uh put them on Turo. Okay. You know, yeah, so yeah. they can just I, I can just pay them off and then they're my kids' cars um once they get their license, basically, I guess. Yeah, I've always looked at and I I wanted I love a Tesla. I love the idea of it, but I didn't want to spend 50 grand on an electric car. You know what I mean? That's what I tell people is if you're not already buying a $50,000 car, I wouldn't right. buy a $50,000 yes, car. It's not worth. It. But if you're wanting to scale, like let's say you want to um become like a Uber Black fleet account, buy the Tesla and then hire a driver through your black account, give them access to Uber black and then get another Tesla and keep doing it. I want to know more about that, but we don't have Uber black in our, well, market. I mean just in general of being a fleet driver or like owning a, like a couple of cars. Yeah. I, you don't even have to have Uber black to be a fleet owner on Uber. I got to figure that out. We should figure that out. Yes, Spur. Now you want me to buy a fleet with you. Well, okay, I didn't say please. we had to buy a <laughs> bunch of them, but if you, if you got some Model 3s, people would do it because it'd be cheaper for them to rent through you oh, yeah. than right. it would through Uber. And then you could also let them use it for other apps, too. Yeah. And that's true. That's true. My biggest thing is I wouldn't want to drive a, a Tesla just because I'm an XL driver. Oh, and you guys are up north, too. So Yeah, the winter thing. I don't know how those work in the winter. I see them out. You know, it's actually interesting. Um, Norway... I'm from, I'm from Scandinavia, so I know some of these things. In Norway, seventy-five uh, percent of all vehicles on the road in Norway is actually electric vehicles, seventy-five percent. And yeah. most most of those are Teslas because they are the only ones that can handle the cold. Oh, yeah, they handle the cold. It's just you know, if you're a, a rideshare driver, the cold weather does make you have to charge more often. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, that makes. Yeah, sense. if you're just a regular commuter, you know you could still go a whole week without charging and charge once a week or whatever. Have you yeah. uh, heard about the Toyota prime vehicles? No, I haven't. So a Toyota prime, they have a SUV and then a sedan, but it's 50 miles of electric and then switches into hybrid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is that like their RAV four? Yeah. Cause that's what some people have been talking to me about. They they're like, do I get a Tesla or this? I'm like, are you paying this kind of car note? And um, I would just probably go with the hybrid because <laughs> most people's commute are less than 50 miles. Yeah, you know? I think it's the best of both worlds. It may not be ideal for a gig worker because you're going to burn through that 50 miles. And it's a generous 50. Let's face it. You you hammer yeah. on that accelerator. You're going to be dropped down to 40 miles. But I like the idea. <laughs> I, I don't think that America is ready for an all electric car to oh no yeah. way no Th they want us to switch to electric but they don't want to like let the regulations lax back on the uh power grid right right right. Well, exactly the power grid can't handle it. <laughs> it, you, you you can't have one thing without giving up another it's right? all in moderation so, you know if you go extreme yeah. one way it's it it's not good either way but i think right. the electric hybrid is is something that they should really try to focus their money uh, their time on because like I said, it, you you commute, you you'll never use gas, and then when you want to go to you know a ball game on the weekend, you don't you know it kicks into the hybrid and uses the fuel. I mean, I think it's kind of win win, and you don't need to charge that thing with a supercharger. You plug it into one ten overnight, and it's fine. Right, or if you still want to go old school with the Prius and those kind of hybrids, because the Camry and the Corolla also have that same technology as the Prius that it charges itself. I was going to say, yeah. Does it really, though? Yeah. See, I don't. Well, so the Prime doesn't. Re, I don't. OK, do not quote me on this, but I don't <laughs> think the Prime charges that electric battery while it's driving. It probably regen brakes, but um, not probably as efficiently as like the previous yeah. um, design. I guess. Yeah, it probably gets a little juice there. But uh, but yeah, because I, I, even my diesel BMW will it has like a little eco mode like so it's got a little extra battery or something i don't know like i don't use fuel if it's in the blue oh. range on that 
Okay. Yeah, it's using the battery that it charged up for my braking. Well, that's pretty it's cool. weird. <laughs> so uh, your your wife does gig work too. Yeah. Um, just so you guys strictly both do gig work. Yeah, we're full time, both of us. Um, well, I guess you know we want to average about thirty five to forty hours each. Mm-hmm. So when we combine, our goal is to be at like three thousand each week. Okay, that's incredible. That yeah. that is great. And you go, you both do the same then, or? Yeah, so I have a Model Three or a Model Y, and she has a Model Three, which she's waiting on a wait list to get into a Model Y. So you know, I have Lift Lux Blacks, and I'm not registered with like any of the stuff on uh, requirements for Uber Black, which is basically a limo license. I don't have that, so I don't have Uber Black yet, but I'm working on that. Very cool. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. This has been cool to to hang out with you. How can people find you? I'm, I'm sure it's pretty easy, but let us know. Yeah, you can find me on YouTube at The Driven Dad. Also, Instagram. I do have one follower on Facebook. <laughs> one follower? <laughs> yeah. Is that, um, is that your wife? <laughs> no, uh, she doesn't even have Facebook. So, And uh, we don't use Facebook. So I don't know. I just started attaching my streams to there. Yeah. And then I'm on Rumble at The Driven Dad and Odyssey at The Driven Dad. And I guess I just registered Twitter and um, Twitch as well. And it's all the, the Driven Dad. That's the Driven Dad. Yep. Very, very cool. Well, I appreciate it. We'll obviously put all the links in there. And then, yeah, check out uh, Tony's stream. He streams a lot. He's in Colorado. So the time for me, the time change is a little weird. But since I'm home right now, I'll be on. I'll be like, oh, yeah, he just he's I'm doing like editing work and. I wish I could right. edit audio and listen to YouTube at the same time, but it doesn't work. I can watch the video. Right. It's, a, it's a little hard, huh? <laughs> yeah. Strangely, can YouTube put up captions? Like, can I, like, put a screen? Like, because I have two monitors. Can I put up, like, where I could read that and then not have the audio on? So if I were to actually, I don't know about live, but, oh. like, my edited videos I can put in CC. Yeah. But I have to type it in myself. Oh, no thanks. Yeah, that's what I said. No thanks. <laughs> Maybe I should put one of my kids to to work on that. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we homeschool them, so that'll be typing practice. Perfect. I mean, they need to know how to do it and make them do it on an <laughs> iPhone and not on right. A computer. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be, then they'll be calling me and they'll be like, "Uh, what did that say? That's not what I said." <laughs> right. And then they'll have like our arthritic thumbs from like doing this right. for like eight hours a day. They'll just buy some AI program that'll do it for them and they won't tell me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You'll see it on your statement next month. Right, <laughs> right. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for listening to the Gig Economy Podcast B-Side. We'll be back next week, Wednesday, for our normal show live stream. So check it out. And, and Jason will be back. I will be back. Awesome. Have a good night. This podcast is produced and edited by Hey Guys Media Group. Want to start a podcast? Check out heyguysmediagroup.com. <laughs>